Hey guys, it's Claymore, and today I am doing something that I haven't ever done before, which is a tutorial. And this tutorial is actually going to be on my painting pro process when I'm doing portraits or an anything else that I really use Photoshop painting for. Um, and to start, I just wanted to show you what brushes that I, I will be using throughout the painting process. Now, I actually purchased the the Tamplier Painter uh, uh, brush set. He, he's a YouTuber that does a bunch of fantasy art. Um, and so I, I've been actually using his, but I will show you the brushes that I will be using. One of them is just like this kind of rectangular one, and it just does a really nice, I don't know, painted, chalky feel. Um, and this is the one I use the majority of the time. The other one I will be using is this other heavily textured brush, which is just kind of gritty and uh, grungy looking. Um, and th they're they're pretty smooth and they, they, they give you some nice differing features. Now, I already did the construction lines um, because I may do a tutorial on how I do faces later on, but right now um, I'm just gonna be showing you my painting process. So I already prepped this one and you can see I have my construction lines and underneath it I'm actually going to put another layer and this is the one that I first block in my base color now I have some skin tones up here but I don't think I'm gonna necessarily go with exactly what's there I'm gonna kind of get a little bit more orange of a color and the nice thing about Photoshop is you can always go through and adjust your colors on the fly so it's gonna get a hard round brush and just fill this whole thing in now you don't have to be super precise with this step you're just blocking in a base tone color you want it kind of a mid-tone to shadow this is actually a bit dark for my taste just make sure it's all one solid color I'm going to go into hue and saturation. I'm going to desaturate that a bit, lighten it up a bit. I might actually bring it closer to the pink side. There we go. I, I like that a little bit more. Now, I need to zoom in. The next step, once I've got this base coat, and I always put that under my construction lines, I make a layer above my construction lines and this is where I'm gonna get my textured brush and I'm gonna go ahead and just put in some shadow now I'm just gonna use kind of a desaturated brown for this and I'm really sloppy just gonna go through and I'm gonna block in my shadows but first I'm going to lower the opacity down to about 60% Maybe a little bit more, maybe 50%. Yep, that way it takes more strokes to get down to the actual um, heavier color. Sorry about that flickering. Every time I hit Control Z, it flickers, so hopefully I don't have to do that very often. But I'm just going to go in and I am going to block in where I know the heaviest shadows are going to be. Okay, so that's our shadows blocked in a little bit there. Now the next is to, I would like to add another color, a little bit orange. So I'm actually gonna make a new layer, lower my opacity even more, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of color to this. I know it's really contrasty right now and it doesn't look that great, but it, it feeds into the overall look because then what I'll do is I will find a space in between these that I like and I can actually just blend that in and now I have like an orangey brown because one thing is in your shading it's not just a single color because the, your skin is kind of translucent a bit and so the light is going to travel through so you would see a little bit more color than what you think on the in the shadows now, I'm not using very many swatches or 
uh, a palette over here. I'm really just working with what's on the face. That's just how I work the most comfortably. I don't like my screen kind of cluttered up with uh, colors and all that. I want to start making sure I can get rid of some of these construction lines. By, I'm just painting right over them. And it's, this is not a like exact thing. You're just going through and you're trying where colors work, where they don't, where to shade, where, where not to, keeping an, uh, an eye on where you want your highlights to come from. Highlights are one of the last things that I do in this step. I'm really focused on the shadows. And you can see my shadows aren't very dark yet, but they they it, it'll get there. I'll uh, I'll end up putting in some dark darker shadows. And oops, I can lighten this up and down down here a little bit. You can see I just grabbed this color, touched a little bit there, and I'm just going to grab a in between color there and lighten this up. I can lighten it up just a bit more. So you also want to think about the small details as well, you know, like the eyelid there, how when if the sun was coming down it would just hit that. Also this part of the brow line would get a little bit of a highlight. You can darken this back in. Uh, I'm making sure that I don't go over all of my construction lines because I do need some of them for the finer details. All right, now I'm gonna move to my basic highlights. Just gonna make a new layer. I use layers all the time. I, and then later on I'll combine them and it, uh, it's just the way I work. <laughs> um, there's no particular reason why I do it. Might actually go back and change the color of my mid-tones or my, uh, my base color, but let's just go ahead and see how this looks. So adding my first highlights and I'm just hitting all the raised areas where the sun is going to hit the most. Now I'm actually going to pick up the like a really dark brown I just found it somewhere over here and I'm gonna define the corners of the mouth like this also you can go through uh, underneath the eyes and darken in where the eyelashes are gonna gonna go okay so from this stage, I'm seeing that it's it's very orange feeling. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to adjust my bottom layer again, or my base tone. I'm going to play with this a little bit. And I want it a little bit more desaturated, a little bit lighter. Now let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like I like that more. So then I can go through and I can use that to kind of mess around with these other colors. I'm gonna zoom in right up to the eye. And I'm gonna go and define this fold that goes that goes from the brow ridge over the eye eyelid most people have it it varies from person to per person some people it's very extreme some people it's not extreme at all I'm actually going to use this red brown to to shade this area a bit more
it, it's really all just trial and error. Um, but I will show you how to do the eyes right now. Now, I'm not going to really mess with the color of the eyes already. Eyes are actually a lot darker than a lot of people think. Um, yes, they are reflective, they're wet, and in a, under a bright light, they're white. But we're, they're, they're in shadow a lot of the times, unless you're specifically in a part where you're like shining lights right on someone eye, someone's eyes. So I'm actually going to go ahead and grab this color again. I'm going to desaturate it and make it darker. I'm also going to lower my opacity and go around and define my eye shape with this. I can also use the same to define this fold. Now remember, the eyeball is a sphere, so you want to shade it like, like one. So over here, it's going to be my highlight, so I need to shade it spherically like that. And just for now, I'm going to go ahead and work on the tear duct just to block that in a little bit over here too. Do the same thing on this side. Now that's a really light tear duct, but everything's a process. Now I'm also going to take this base tone like that. And this is where I take a really light color, still a little bit warm. And I'm just gonna kinda go over it. I didn't shade that side, but putting a highlight first isn't that big of a deal. Okay, so then I think I want him to have green eyes. Let's go with like a dark, scummy green. Now with my method, you know, if, the, if some of the construction lines come through, I, I used to be a perfectionist with this kind of stuff and it would drive me nuts. I'd spend hours and hours and hours and hours making sure I go over every single surface absolutely perfectly and I feel that took the enjoyment out of it because it just became way too much work and now I'm a little bit more loose with it and it's so much more enjoy enjoyable. So let me go ahead and grab this really dark brown again and I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. If it feels monochromatic at this point it's because it is and uh, a lot of the color will I'll actually come in later with with overlays and um, the different filters and that's that's how I get color into my pieces some variation and then once that's on I'll go on a layer above and use those colors that are there and I'll spread them out it's very much trial and error you, it, you're not gonna get this quickly it's not necessarily super easy either to if you're really picky on, on your color this this isn't really the way to do it um, like I said, I don't, I don't use palettes or anything because it would just drive me nuts because I always stray from my original color a lot. I do jump around in my process a lot. I've, I've tried to streamline it before and I just, uh, when it comes to my artwork, when I see it, that, that's, what, that, that's what I work on. I don't have any specific steps that I really follow. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this light eye color and I'm going to represent the depth, the thickness of this lower eyelid. It works really well. Okay. Now I sometimes I work on both eyes at the same time. Sometimes I work on them one at a time. Really depends on the day or the piece. Go ahead and lighten that up. I'm going to grab a little bit of white or light gray, which is really desaturated, and put a little bit on there and spread that out. And that kind of gives you that white look. You can see I still have this nice shadow under here, which I will eventually go in and darken yet again. I'll probably do that right now. Just to really sh show that line. Um, now I'm going to go grab this I'm gonna get a really dark brown and I'm going to outline the eye again I'm going to get the pupil in 
Now you can see it's pretty much almost black, which I don't want it completely black, but almost black is just fine. It still fits within the pic picture. It looks nice. And browns pretty much shade everything on a face. You can shade almost anything with a brown, especially a really low opacity brown. Because you just keep layering it on, you can see the colors underneath. Okay, so then what I'm going to do, um, with eyes, I, I treat them as like they're a bowl and you're looking into the inside side of a bowl. So if the light is coming down from this di direction, then the if it were a bowl, this part would catch light. So that's the part that I'm going to light up. I don't really like how light that is, so I'm going to bring that down to this level a bit more. I might grab a different green. Maybe, maybe this one. Yep, okay, I like that. And then I'll just grab... Uh, I'll take this color, and I'll just lighten it up and desaturate it a bit. And that's what I'll use for my highlight. Okay. And I will... I'm going to take this. And because, you know, a lot of people, they want to draw... Let me grab a new layer. They want to draw eyelashes like this along an eye. And that just looks strange. So what I do is I actually take a really dark brush. And I darken in this upper lid. And you can do, like, little peaks that come out just barely visible my brush actually is opaque enough for that so oops. go ahead and grab this and it doesn't have to be perfect make the brush really small and then I will do kind of the same thing down here just hint at eyelashes then I'm going to grab this because now I want to shade because this part of the eye is also kind of moist. Grab that and I will also highlight this with it as well. Because remember, this is kind of like a brownish white, it's like an off white. And you can pretty much shade everything with it. I'm going to grab this dark brown I used before and I'm going to shade this area with, with it as well the tear duct. You don't want to use hard lines, that's because hard lines make it seem like it's outlined. And if you're like me, I don't, I'm not really a fan of outline lighting things. That's just not what I do. Okay, I'm going to take that original pinkish color that I used before and I'm going to darken it up. That way I can use this as a nice shade. I'm going to use this over here too. I'm just going to tint this area with that. And you can see the difference. And it, it really wasn't, didn't take all that much time. So now um, I'll get this other eye done and I will show you how to do some lips. So next I'm going to do lips. So I'm going to go ahead and grab just a red, any red, and I am going to bring it down to about, uh, let's say, that color. Kind of like a midway desaturated red, a little bit darker. And we are going to go ahead, it might be a little bit too red, it's not bad. With At a low opacity, we're just going to paint it on. The lips aren't solid they're they're, they're bul bulbous just like everything else so there's actually like this little thing that comes down from the top of your lip right there that kind of goes over the bottom lip no technical words here just things and bulbous and that right there yeah so 
So I will lighten that up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and darken in the actual line of the mouth and let it f fade out a little bit. Now the upper lip is going to get more shading than the bottom lip. But don't forget there are some, depending on whose lips they are, there are, you know, some of them, some people's lips, they just like point down and that wouldn't really get as much shading, but the upper lip will always be darker than the bottom lip, depending on the lighting. If the lighting's come, coming from below, then the lower lip will be darker than the upper lip. Also reflection from the lips as well. So go ahead and bring this up gonna do that it and that doesn't have to be much now I'm gonna grab a white Oops. get a little bit of color into it because I don't want it just straight white Put a little bit of shine there now I'm gonna take these shadows and I'm gonna draw them out quite a bit grab a white once again, now you can go as detailed with the lips as you want. One of the things I do is I just kind of leave things rough. I don't know, it, it's kind of my style. I, I enjoy the way it looks. to the nose here now the nose it's really not all that hard uh, the, the nostrils are usually as dark as you feel you, you want to get them uh, which I usually go fairly dark not using black just using really dark brown I mean it probably looks black but if you use straight up black it kind of gives it this weird ashy look which I really don't like plus if you use complete black and it's it is utterly black you can't change the color of it with this since it's almost black when I use the hue saturation it actually slightly adjusts the color which is exactly what I want and one thing you can always do is go through and clean up the shading because right now, yeah, it's it's really really rough. And even sometimes, what I'll even do is just take the default Photoshop soft brush on a low opacity, and I'll just come through and soften all these lines up if I really wanted to. But this being a male face, I find that the the more kind of ed like gritty and edgy it looks, the better. Back to the nose. Now I am going to lighten this up I'm gonna get rid of these construction lines because the nose doesn't have all these crazy lines on it I think we are ready for a really good highlight here uh, I'm starting to get pretty happy where this is going I'm just gonna outline the jaw bit kind of darken in down here because I really want that jaw to be nice and solid I don't want it to be kind of blending in but I'm not using lines I'm, I'm shit I'm just adding more shadow I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna mess with some of the features and see if I like them or not so uh, I'll see you in a second so zooming out I, I really only had to change a little bit but you can see a difference and it's a little bit more symmetrical it's not it's not bad okay so now for the hair we'll, we'll go ahead and do the hair now I'm going to go 
think I'm gonna kind of try and make him like a sandy blonde. I don't know. That, I, I really like that color hair. I've done it for quite a few characters. So I'm just gonna go in. I'm gonna block in all of this with just a, a random brown. He's kind of got a mullet going on, doesn't he? <laughs> it's okay. So then I actually have in this Tamplier Painter brush that I have some hair br brushes, which is really nice to have. And all I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna block in some shadow. So using the same brush, I'm just gonna get a little bit lighter of a brown. Just to finish it off, I'm just gonna go grab a default, you know, one of the hard br brushes and really small and I'm actually gonna go ahead and add a couple individual hairs and it kind of points out a few specific hairs that you're trying to accentuate now I'm gonna put in the eyebrows which I just grab a, let me grab my, where is it at, here, just grab this brush again, and I'm going to go ahead and darken this in, making sure I get all the areas that I want, just, it's just blocking in, I mean, it's nothing super special, there's no trick or secret to it, take some black, and I will shade the general shape of it and same brush I'm just going to highlight this a bit and there you have it I hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something um, and I'll be doing a tutorial on my construction lines later on I'll show you how I draw the face um, in this manner um, yeah, so thanks for watching.